Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got a Synology disk station again on the desk today because we're going to do another uh, two-part sponsored series from Synology on their new DSM 6.1 operating system. And if you have a Synology device, any Synology device, uh, you will be getting this operating system pushed down to your device for free. In fact, it's probably already running on it if you have uh, your automatic update set up. And in this video, we're going to look at a whole bunch of features that have been added to the operating system. And then the next video is going to focus on backup. In fact, we're going to look at ways you can back up locally, how you can back up remotely, and a number of other things in between. It's going to be a fun video in part two, but in this part, we're going to look at all the different features that 6.1 will bring you for free. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Synology. They suggested the content for me to cover in this video and are also reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into it and see what we can do now with the new operating system. So we're going to kick things off with BTRFS. This is a file system that is focused focused on data integrity. It's able to keep real-time replications of your files as things change throughout the day. You can even have replications made of entire folders. So if you have somebody who wipes out a file at the end of the day, uh, you can very easily roll back to what that file looked like before they wiped it out without having to resort to the prior evening's backup. So you have uh, some really good options here to protect your data throughout the day. And version 6.1 adds BTRFS support to more Synology NAS models. You can see the full list here. And it also adds the ability to uh, uh, back up or run this replication on uh, your encrypted folders that are stored on your devices as well. I'll put a full compatibility list link down below in the video description. Now 6.1 also adds the ability to encrypt pre-existing folders. So if you wanted to add encryption to a folder in the past, you had to create it as an encrypted folder up front. Now you can do it after the fact. So I've got a folder here with some files in it. I will go over here to the control panel to the shared folder uh, option there. Click on edit over our folder that we wish to encrypt and you'll now see on your list of options is the ability to encrypt the folder and you can type in your key and then uh, wait a few minutes for it to encrypt the folder and all the stuff in it. They've also added a new feature called key manager where you could uh, make a much more secure key, a very long gibberish key for example that might be hard to remember uh, but you don't have to write it down because you can have it stored on a physical USB key and when that key is inserted into the disk station it will mount itself without having to type anything in again so it encourages you to use longer passwords. It it also provides a means of having a safe place to store your keys uh, when you want to make sure that nobody can get access to your data after you leave at the end of the day. So for example, you can uh, pull the key out when you're ready to leave and if somebody were to try to get access to your disk station, uh, they won't be able to decrypt that, that folder because you've got a very strong password uh, stored on a physical key that you've taken with you. So it's a nice new feature that if you are really using a lot of the data encryption features, you can use stronger passwords and have a much easier way of decrypting the data when you need to get at it. And if you're managing a large number of computers on a network, your Synology NAS can now act as an Active Directory server. Uh, that might save you some money, actually, because you don't need to have a Windows Active Directory server and all the licenses sometimes required to connect to it. Uh, you can get everything centrally located essentially for free uh, with your Synology NAS and get uh, most of the features you would expect to see out of a traditional Windows Active Directory server. So you can set up users and groups, uh, group policies for security. You can also uh, distribute software and system updates. Again, and all centrally located uh, through your Synology NAS device versus using a dedicated Windows server to do that. All right, let's take a look now at some more user-facing features, and we're going to begin with Universal Search. So what I can do here on the Mac is hit Command F, and on other platforms, it's Control F. I'm going to type in the word space, and it will then immediately begin searching through all of my documents and providing me some results of that. And in this case, it found the word space uh, inside a number of documents that I had stored on uh, my NAS device. So this file, hc3.txt, is not named space, but it did find space inside of it and it provided me with a preview of that. Uh, the same can be said of this HTML file here as well. So any readable text uh, can be indexed, and it will also give me search results with those words in there. So if I'm looking for help or I'm looking for a document, I can just pull up that search. It will search all of those things. It even goes in and finds uh, things that I added with some of the Synology apps like NoteStation. Uh, you can also click on the show all in universal search to pull up the universal search app to have this window be more static and you can then uh, sort by the type of file that it is and you still get the preview uh, while you are in here. Now then what you'll do is uh, click on it initially to configure it so you tell it what to search for and how to search it. So I'm going to go back into that app, uh, click on the uh, little preference icon here and then click on index folder list and you'll see I have uh, three folders here set up to be indexed and what I did when I created these 
indexes as I told uh, the indexing application what kind of documents might be in there so it knows how to order its files. So right now I have documents set for all of those folders because I have documents only in them. But for example, if I had a, a folder full of videos, I could tell it it's a video folder. It'll look for the file type, you know, what kind of uh, file it is, as well as how long it might be so that I can narrow searches down uh, that way as well. So it has some ability to optimize its search uh, based on the type of file that's in there in addition to uh, the name of the file. So if you clicked on document here, for example, this is what triggers the uh, indexing engine to go in and look inside of your files to uh, add them to its index. So really cool stuff that you can uh, now do this kind of search, again, built right into the Synology disk station. And my understanding is, is that if you have a Mac, uh, this search will also be available on the Mac Finder as well. And DSM 6.1 has also made improvements to the USB copy application. It is now called USB copy 2.0. I'm going to load it up here real quick. And uh, what I have mine configured for right now is to dump photos off of my uh, card here, which came out of my camera. So every time this gets put in, I can have it automatically execute what I'm about to show you here, which is really useful. So what we can do here is every time that's attached, um, we can go in and uh, have it copy files in an incremental fashion, uh, which means that it will only copy over the new files that it doesn't already have. And what I'm also doing here is having it change the file structure from the card. So what it's doing is breaking out the photos into separate folders based on the day that I took the picture. So I have uh, all of my events kind of broken out automatically rather than just a big folder full of photos uh, that are currently on there. It's very useful too, especially if your camera creates new folders every 100 photos or so. Uh, uh, this will take all of those files and consolidate them into a date-based uh, organizational strategy, which might be a lot easier. I'm unticking this option here, but if you really want to uh, keep your files organized, you can have it delete files from the card after it safely copies everything over. And if there's a file conflict, you can have it rename the file to something else so it doesn't overwrite something by accident, uh, or you can just have it overwrite it if you're not concerned about that. And what you'll get when you're done with that particular operation is this. I've got all of my files here broken out by date, and I can uh, jump into each one here and uh, see all the photos in there. Now I have this uh, copying over some raw files from my camera, but it doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's going to look at the date uh, and then rename the files here based on the date and put them uh, into a particular folder based on that date, which for me is a big time saver. And then I can go through uh, each event separately and see what I want to keep or not keep. And it really makes it easier to figure out where you last left off in your photocopying activities. Now you can have this run automatically every time a device is plugged in to that USB port. So for example, I could just uh, plug this cable in and just have it execute automatically every time I do that. It can then eject it when it's done. Uh, so you can pretty much do this unmanaged without having to go into the control panels. So you can get back from a photo shoot, uh, plug your device in, it'll do all of its copying, and then it'll beep at you to tell you that you can take it out. Uh, so you don't even have to log into your computer to get your files dumped out, and you can get at them later uh, all organized nicely for you. So that's kind of a cool feature. But USB copy also works very nicely nicely as a two-way backup solution. So you could actually have it just back up your external hard drives to your Synology NAS. And the data can be backed up as well out the Synology NAS. So if you wanted to use this as a very simple backup utility, uh, you can do that. It just won't be as secure as the hyper backup utility that we covered last year. But we will focus a little bit on using USB copy as a, a backup means in our next video, which will focus all about backup on the Synology NAS devices running in DSM 6.1. And there are a few other new features in 6.1 worth mentioning. The first is the resource monitor, where you can now generate a more detailed report of running applications and get information regarding their running time and utilization. Uh, there's also an alarm now, so if you have something that is uh, running too hot, you can get notified of that and correct it. It now has an SMI-S provider that is used for Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager. And this allows IT managers to manage multiple Synology NAS servers as storage nodes via SCVMM centralized user interface. And if you know what I'm talking about, that will be an important feature for you. Time Machine now allows you to have usage quotas on uh, multiple shared folders if you're using the new BTRFS file system. And Mac OS Sierra can now use Time Machine backups via SMB as well. And users of Seagate NAS drives will now find that the Iron Wolf Drive Health Management is integrated with Storage Manager. So you'll get live drive health monitoring right on your control panel there and any suggested actions that you need to take if things are going awry. Users can now change SHR1 volumes with one drive fault tolerance to two drive 
fault tolerance SHR2 volumes without having to rebuild the entire array. SMB 4.4 is also supported and RAID F1 is available on XS and XS Plus models. So that'll do it for some of the major new features found in Synology's new DSM 6.1. Remember, you get that for free on your Synology device. Some of those IT features like the Active Directory server and BTRFS will not work on all devices, but a USB copy, universal search, and many of the other new features that are uh, working their way into this new version will. So definitely poke around and check it out. If there are other things you want me to look at as well, do let me know down in the comment section below. And don't forget, we're going to have our big backup episode coming up in a couple of days. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.